you for your presence. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you, God, for moving miraculously. Lord, this, this, this season, we're believing you for miracles, signs, wonders, not just gifts and presents under the tree, which is great, it's, it's good, but we're believing you to do something extraordinary today, something extraordinary this, this season, something extraordinary, oh God, in our families, in our homes, in our relationships. We believe in you to do, oh God, what some may seem to be or think is incredible, it is certainly not incredible with you. It's not too difficult. It is not too hard. <laughs> oh God, nothing is too difficult. Diff no, too, nothing is too difficult for you. We invite your presence. We invite you. Come in the midst, swirl, twirl in our midst. Have your way. We touch and agree and believe right now for the miraculous, for signs, wonders, following your word. Father God, we thank you, God, in advance. If there's anyone who needs healing, if there's anyone, oh God, who, oh God, who needs a touch, a fresh touch from you, we release our faith this morning that when they leave, they're going to be better than when they came. So I touch and agree and believe right now for the miraculous. Thank you, God. Move by your presence. Move by your anointing. We bind the rebuke and resist right now. The ash projecting activity. We bind the rebuke right now. The advance any incantations. We decree and declare any attack assigned against this broadcast assigned against your people. It is reversed and it boomerangs back. Seven times greater than the one that sent it, which is Satan. Thank you, God, for releasing war angels all around us today. Thank you, God, for releasing your presence. Thank you in advance, God, for touching a manservant to bring forth the word of power, anointing, and authority. We give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. This morning, amen, this Christmas Eve day, we thank God for this day. I want to read to you Isaiah 9 and 6. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government uh, shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called what? Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. We're coming to you today. Amen. The worship team, we're coming, doing something a little bit different. We're going to be coming to you today, just worshiping the Lord. Just sing along with us. Worship with us. Give God glory, honor, and praise with us. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. His name is Emmanuel, God with us.
give God the glory, give God the praise, and magnify Him. Magnify his name. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to ask right now. Amen. Brother Ronnie's going to come forth and give us the next uh, worship selection. And come on and just give God the praise and worship with him. In Jesus' name. Okay. Oh, listen. Oh, no. So now we're having a couple of technical difficulties. We're going to start this over because we ain't going to let the enemy have nothing. How's that? How's that? All right? Let's go for it. Come on, Brother Rodney. Make it happen. Amen. 
God is so faithful. He know what to do. Let's go with it. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Life Builder Church's Sunday morning worship service. Merry Christmas Eve to everyone, from our family to yours. As with every Sunday morning worship service, we start off with praise to our Lord and Savior, and we will not deviate from that this Christmas Eve morning. So I'm going to do an all-time classic Christmas carol, a hymn, O Holy Night.
Amen. Hallelujah. God bless his name. <clears throat> Merry Christmas from our family to your family. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, holy night. What a holy night it was, right? What a holy night. What a blessed night. What a blessed occasion. Amen. The wise men traveled from afar to come and see the baby. Jesus, who actually was a toddler by the time they got there. But, but if that night, though, remember the night that Jesus uh, was born, the day he was born, and how Mary and Joseph left, and they went to see um, well, there's, well, if there was any room in the end, they had to find a place where Jesus could be born. And, you know, Jesus, what I like about this is the fact that <clears throat> although Jesus, if he had wanted to, he could have been born with all pomp and circumstance, right? He was a king. Okay? Even as a baby, he was conceived, amen, in the womb of Mary, holy conception. He could have come if he had desired with jewels, with royalty, with a crown, with diamonds, with royal robes and all of those things like kings do with their, you know, when they're born. But instead he came, he came with a humble birth. Amen. Humble, humble birth. Amen. He didn't demand, make any demands, but he came humbly. But he walked this earth. Amen. He walked this earth. He lived and he died and he rose again. So we understand we love this season. We love Christmas. We love what Christmas is all about. We love the families gathering. And I pray that you're gathering with loved ones, if a, a friend or family members this, this year, you're doing something to gather with people that you love. Um, it's not so much about the gifts. We have the greatest gift we could ever have, right? We have the greatest gift and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. And without him, I have to say one thing, without Jesus, this season would what? It would be meaningless. Without Jesus, this season, it would be nothing. So remember that we have to keep Christ in the season, Christ in Christmas. All right. I love to watch movies, Hallmark movies sometimes, as Bishop jokingly says. All right. But, you know, I know, I know what, who I believe in and I know who I serve. So, you know, sometimes it's time to watch them, certain ones. It's not about necessarily romance, but it's about, you know, keeping Christ in the season. There are some that do. Others I just turn off and I just wait for the old class to come on. But getting back to today, we're here today to celebrate the Lord. We celebrate the, here to celebrate Christ. Amen. We want to keep him as Lord and Christ in the season. Keep Christ in Christmas. Amen. Let's just um, look to the Lord. Give God the praise. Father God, we thank you in advance this morning for this day. We just arrest right now. We just arrest right now. God, anything, anything that's not like you, we just praise you and we thank you. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. You know our hearts. You know our desires. You know, oh God, what our desire and our focus is. And we just give you praise right now. We thank you in advance, God, for moving in this place. Moving, oh God, in all the homes. Moving, oh God. Even, oh God, in the airways, those who may be listening, driving their car, or God, and whatever, having breakfast, whatever they're doing. We just thank you in advance. Because we believe you there is an appointed time. And we believe you that there is a set time. For God, whatever we may be experiencing in life, whatever we're going through, you know how to meet us. You know how to meet us. You know how to arrest where we are and bring us, oh God, into the place where we need to be. So I thank you, God, that the word coming forth today, the songs coming forth today will bless and encourage and uplift. Oh God, I just thank you, God, moved by your spirit, moved by your anointing, moved by your power, touch every heart. We release our faith right now in advance for extraordinary things. Come on, get your faith up. Get your faith up right now. Get your faith up. Hallelujah. God is about to do extraordinary things. We give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise. Oh God, get the honor and the glory as we release our faith. We lift up our lives before you. We celebrate you as our resurrected king. We celebrate you as our Lord. We celebrate you. <laughs> we celebrate you. We celebrate you, who you are, not just what you give us, not just money, not just gifts, trinkets and toys, 
But we celebrate you as our Lord and as our Savior. Get the glory, get the honor, get the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Going to amen, because I'm going to start right now with you. The Life Builders Corporate conf Confession Declaration. Amen. <clears throat> the Life Builders Church Corporate Confession and Declaration. Come on in. Amen. Read along with me. Hallelujah. Life Builders Church is a church and ministry focused on the agenda of the kingdom of God. We're corporately called to be people of prayer, kingdom action, kingdom building, and transformers of lives. Amen. And builders of people that know their purpose and take their place as productive citizens of the kingdom of God. We have God's, man, we have God's mandate. We have all necessary components in place, inclusive of power, provision, personnel, and people. We have men for the vision, hallelujah, and people what? For the work. We have everything we need. Say it again. We have everything we need. And again, we have everything that we need. Hallelujah. We have all that God ordained for us to have, possess, and obtain for his purpose. We are a stable house with longevity. We are relevant. We are vibrant and fresh. We impact this generation and future generations for his glory. 2023 and 2024 is and will be our year to retake mountains and territory, lands and platforms with divine strategies and solutions as we build and expand for the kingdom and the glory of God. We without fail recover what? All, hallelujah, let's give God the praise and thank God. Hallelujah. Next, we're going to have Sister Leticia to come forth. Amen. And share with us. Hallelujah. Oh, come all you faithful.
so beautiful, beautiful, Brother Ronnie and Sister Keisha, so beautiful, so anointed. Thank God for your voices. Amen. For Tisha, Sister Tisha, Brother Ronnie, thank you so much for just letting the Lord use you today. Amen. We just want to, um, our last song, we just want to share with you. Mary, did you know that your baby born was born? Amen.
Blessed Lord, blessed Jesus, oh come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Oh come let us adore him, Christ, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Say with me. Oh, come, let us adore him, unmute your mics, come on, sing together with me. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ, Lord. This time we're going to have none other than our very own pastor, bishop, apostle, J. Charles Carrington, as Ronnie says, J.R., amen. We give God <laughs> praise. Come on, give God glory. Honey, you look fabulous in your red, so your Christmas red. Thank you one more minute. I just want you to look at everybody and tell them what Christmas means to you and how these individuals listening today have blessed us. Well, first of all, you have blessed us tremendously. We thank God for you and being here, tuning in. Amen. We just give God praise for also our, our, um, our listening audience and those that are in the internet and those that, uh, who may be from other countries and other places of the world. Amen. We thank God for all of our guests this morning. We just give God praise for you. Amen. And what Christmas means to me, Christmas to me means Jesus and means family. Always has, always will be. It means Jesus, the greatest gift you could ever give, and it means sharing it with family. Amen. God bless. I love that woman. Coming up January 7th, uh, 40 years of living together, husband and a wife. I got five years prior to that with the company. <laughs> Good friends we were, and I appreciate her so much. Beloved, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. I know before I get to this word, Jesus was not born on December 25th. I know that Constantine did a lot of crazy mixed up stuff, trying to mix um, the birth of Jesus with secularism, trying to make everybody comfortable. You know, the whole thing with the tree and all that stuff, some of it from Jeremiah and other texts have not a negative connotation but beloved, I'm not here to condemn that. The one other thing I want to do, when we as believers know the word of God and know that number one, Jesus was born. Can y'all just say that? Somebody write it in the chat. Jesus was born. He wasn't hatched. He didn't come from behind the tree. He didn't come from the cabbage patch. Jesus was born, born savior, born deliverer, born king of saints, all right? Sometimes the bottom line is the only focus we should have. I know I'm not worshiping no God, Tammuz, son of Nimrod. I know that I don't have a tree in my house to have a dedication to an idol, I know that the Christmas bulbs don't represent male genitalia to me. I know that there is no Santa Claus. Good intention, but no. There is no wizard that can work magic of Christmas. I know there is no Rudolph. There is no Frosty. There is no other things that come on TV at this time. <laughs> but can we look at the message of Christmas? And can 
we ask ourselves, what part can I play while the world is talking about Jesus? His birth, his life. Two years later, when the three wise men came from the east and presented them gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, took them two years to come all that way. And they found Jesus, not a babe and an angel, but as a toddler, knelt to him and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Can I focus on that and tell the world what he means to me? Tell the world how good he is to me. Tell the world what he's done for me. Father, I thank you for Christmas. I thank you for your birth. You came as God in man in order to draw man back to God. You were very man at the same time, very God. You're the word and the word was God and the word is God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, like John said, full of grace and truth. Jesus, you came to your own, and your own didn't want anything to do with you. But you said to as many as receive you, to them you gave power to become sons of God. So, Lord, here we are. Let us open our mouth and declare to the world. Tell them about this Jesus that we know. And Lord, you arise and every enemy be scattered. Thank you for the word. It will be heard. It will be declared. It will bring you glory. Thank you for everything you've done for your perfect sacrifice. Paid for us. Made for us. Empowering us. Thank you, Lord, for our chroniclers and behind the scenes working out the kinks but it all turns out great because you're Lord of Life Builders Church, Lord of our presentation. Thank you for all that have a hand in producing this stream today. Let us share it with pride and give it what it deserves. Lord God, the sharing of the gospel, the sharing of the good news. Now Lord, Hide this your servant beyond the cross. And all of you be seen and heard and not me. Promise you I will not touch your glory. I will not hinder your praise. But let signs and wonders accompany and follow your word. We utter it and it shall be. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to move along a little quickly, but let's go and declare. Hold your Bibles up with me and let's say together, Lord, I thank you. Come on. Lord, I thank you that I have my Bible. It is personal, my personal copy, a basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much more the blessed because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. Father, your word is a lamp unto my feet giving me present clarity, a lamp unto my pathway, giving me future illumination, illumine my way, show me your glory, your word I hide in my heart that I may not sin against you. Lord, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive. I will not be distracted, but I will hear your word today. And as a result of what I hear today, I'm going to leave this place better than I came to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we thank God for our worship team, all that participated. Sister Talia also sings wonderful throughout this year. Thank you, singers. Pastor Al, like none other, we love you. Thank you. Amen. Sister Talia, we love you. Thank you. Letitia, Tisha, we love you, and we thank you. Ronnie, Man, you the man, we love you, and we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all of our chroniclers, Elder Kyra Lyles. Thank God for her. Thank God for uh, Sister Leah, Sister Ashley, 
Wise, Sister Leah Petway. Thank God for Brother Evan Carrington. Thank God for Brother Gary. Thank God for uh, Brother Kyle in person. Lord God, our coordinator and our filmer. Thank God for everybody, everything. Evan, thank God for you, son. Thank God for even Sister Cherise and helped us, Cherise Hicks. It's just been a wonderful thing all year to present this stream. Now, we got one more stream to go. We'll be live next Sunday. You are in charge. Why don't you come up and be blessed? Also, before the word, let us not forget. Look, this is what I need you to do. Hear me one thing. Bring a fresh, brand new bottle of oil with you. God gave me this, and I'm going to say this very quick and get into the word. God gave me this some years ago, that we would all bring a bottle of oil, pour our oil into one receptacle, and re-pour the oil back into the bottles. And we would use that oil as a corporate anointing. Oil itself does not have the power, but the power is in agreement. Oh, I feel that right now. The power is in the oneness. The power is in the unity. Beloved, we're going to take the bottles of oil next Sunday after the youth in charge and have worship and the word comes. And we're going to mix those bottles of oil into one vat. And we're going to add the smell, the fragrance, the ointment of frankincense. Everyone's oil will be fragrant frankincense. Now, I want to say this now. And I want to say it so you hear it. Don't use the oil for cooking. Don't consume the oil. Once the frankincense, actually the spinknard will be used. It's placed in the oil. It will no longer be edible. Please do not fry with it. Do not put it on your lips and taste it. Don't do it. Spinknard is not poison to kill you unless you do it in large quantities, but it is not to be consumed. Speaking of is for external application. So you take that oil and, and uh, once you have your bottle, re-anoint your house, re-anoint your windows, your doors. Re-anoint, my goodness, those in your household are uh, on the head and just, just come together and agree on January 1st for a powerful year that the anointing we're walking in is a corporate anointing. So next Sunday's worship, after the young adults are in charge, I will come and I will take the oil, pour it all in a vat, add the fragrance of spinknard, and we will all have the oil poured back, giving back our vessels, and you will leave at the worship knowing that we are going to walk in a corporate anointing. Also, let me let this time be to invite you to next uh, Sunday's worship live, 7701 Seven Mile Lane will be live, amen, in worship, and then on January 1st, that's right, January 1st will be virtual on the same airwaves, streaming our first worship. We do not any longer have watch night service. Many of us know when you know better, you strive to do better. Watch night was when the slaves would let the new year come in and some would escape. We're no longer slaves. We do not allow that purpose to be a reminder of slavery. No, we're free. So we have first worship. Every time, every New Year's Day, 10 a.m., we give God the first of our year. We allow God to be glorified in the first of our year, and we let him be praised, glorified and worship. So join us next Sunday, live 7701 Seven Mount Lane in Pikesville, Maryland, Pikesville Middle School. Then join us virtually on January 1st, 10 a.m. both worships, Eastern Time. Amen, and you're going to be blessed. If you're a guest, bring your bottle of oil. Send your bottle of oil if you can't make it, and join in with this corporate anointing. Everybody, turn your Bibles to Isaiah 26 and 3. Isaiah 26 and 3. I'm going to move along swiftly, but I have a thorough word. Isaiah 26 and 3. And again, thank you, Chroniclers. Thank you for the wonderful job you've all done. Merry Christmas, everybody. 
Isaiah 26 and 3 from the Christian Standard Bible, you talking about the Lord will keep the mind that is dependent on you in perfect peace, for it is trusting in you. Let's read that again. You will keep the mind that is dependent on you in perfect peace, for it is trusting in you. Also, our text, Luke 138 from the New King James. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Again, then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I just have a simple admonition, and I'll be out of your way. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't reinvent the wheel. We all know this is a colloquialism, a statement, admonishing us if something works right. Don't try to fix it or make it something that is not. Yeah, improve it. Because back when the wheel was invented, some thought in the caveman days, the wheel was a Flintstone special. A round <laughs> tire that I don't know how it blew out, but it did. One episode, the French tire blew out. <laughs> in the Flintstone mobile. But, yeah, we want to have a better tire now. I I, I don't drive on stones anymore. Some tires are solid all the way through. They last a long time, but when they weigh unevenly, oh, you got to get rid of it. Some tires had inner tubes in them. And if the inner tube ruptured, sometimes it would explode and cause a horrible crash. The day's tires are made either run flat to last you 50 miles until you can get to a place where you get it fixed or get it replaced. Some tires just go out, but it doesn't cause you to have a terrible accident. It just deflects and allows you to be able to slow down and keep control of your car. But the basic premise of the wheel is still based on the original design. Improve it, yes, but don't try to reinvent it. Don't reinvent the wheel. And I want you to hear me that we've discussed several aspects of having a sound mind, obtaining it, maintaining it, retaining it. And we want you to have sanity in an insane world. We've given you thus far seven ways to obtain, maintain, and retain your sanity. And our world is truly insane. But method number one to maintain, retain as you obtain sanity is to make what God said your primary source. I got these notes. Come on, stick with them. Take picture of them, but don't let it slip. What God said, the God said factor, your primary source of information how do I do that, man of God? By saturating in the word of God. Saturate means read it, listen to it. I like listening to the word. I got the app on my phone. I have the app in my tablets. But sometimes I just put the word on and let it play as I'm working, as I'm doing something. The word is feeding my subconscious mind, feeding my conscious mind. The word is bathing the atmosphere. Somebody write in the chat, saturation. Hallelujah. Then, number two, I maintain, obtain after I obtain, I maintain and retain sanity by looking to see the presence of God in something before I get about it. If God ain't in it, neither am I. God ain't involved, I'm not involved. Number three, I determine to keep the peace. 
by avoiding drama at all costs. Remember I told you, drama would not be a part of my life unless I paid for it, either by play or movie or some type of action that I dictate. But I'm in control when I let drama in. The only drama I want, especially in 2024, in my life is what I pay for, for entertainment. I don't want some of these drama-mongering shows. And I'm going to say this right now. There have been accusations made of a great man of God who many have allowed to bless their lives. Are they true? I don't know. I have no idea. But what I do know is I know this man to be a man of God. Y'all know I'm talking about Bishop T.D. Jakes. Yes, I mentioned his name publicly. There should be no drama. You should be praying for that man. Look at all the Lord has used him to do. And how dare we try to crucify him with drama moments. I will call them ambulance chases. The Lord is not pleased. You don't know what you're talking about. If it has not been proven, you need to be quiet and pray. Something wrong with the church. Something wrong when we want drama more than peace. I'm praying that you get rid of that. Pray for Bishop and Lady James. To what I know, he preaching this morning. If I know, some point, don't turn us off because uh, we got a word. But I'm praying for that man of God. Stay away from the drama. Number four, develop and master the mind of Christ in your life. Develop and master the mind of Christ in your life. Number five, put in the necessary work to be effective in sticking to the regimen of everything we've said thus far. Again, God said factor. Determine to keep the peace. Avoid the drama. Determine, my God, that not only that, but seek the presence of God in everything. My God, master the mind of Christ in your life. Put in that necessary work. Number six, daily master your mouth. Part of that is also mastering what you hear. You master your mind, you master what you hear. You master your tongue. Master your lips. You don't know, you don't know. Don't say a thing. Don't add to the drama. Master your mouth. And last week, we talked about you must intentionally mature spiritually. I believe if many of us will mature spiritually, we would know to pray. The Holy Ghost will do what he do, but our posture is on our knees, standing before God, laying on our face prostrate, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting, and shut your mouth and open it to God. Again, number one, we maintain after we obtain, as we retain our sanity by the God said fact by looking to see the presence and the glory of God in our lives, by determining to keep the peace and avoiding all drama, by developing and mastering the mind and what you hear, that you have the mind of Christ in your life, putting in the necessary regimen and the work to stick to this. Daily master your mouth. And we must intentionally mature spiritually. Now, I assure you by the power of the Holy Ghost that when you fully commit to the discipline of this regimen, hear me, your entire life will raise up to a new level. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your heart and your mind will be settled. Talking about the peace of God. Can you imagine when you're not a drama monger, how much peace you have? Can you imagine when you're not receiving drama and only letting praise come from your mouth and not letting everybody feed mess in your spirit? Basic computer principle, garbage in, garbage out. Come on, garbage in. Somebody write that in the chat. Garbage out. I have no time for garbage. I don't want it. Drama here, drama there, drama everywhere. Garbage in, garbage out. You talk drama when drama's in there. You speak garbage when garbage in your mind. Just because somebody else said it, hear me, even if they're credible. If God ain't in it, I'm not in it. God have mercy.
immersed. But when you exercise the peace of God in this insane world, your entire life will rise to a new level. Your heart and mind will be settled. I feel like preaching. And you will live in a purpose greater than ever before. Your purpose is why you're here. Nothing else. Less than that. Let's go chronicle. Today's word is simply admonishing us all to not seek to reinvent the wheel. Just don't reinvent the wheel. If somebody write that in the chat, you got a chance. Don't reinvent the wheel. Now, let's go back to our text in Luke chapter one. Okay. Nobody but God can do this. Luke chapter one, the almighty God by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is how Mary got pregnant, not through sexual intercourse, not through copulation, not through nick-nick, not through cutting the mustard, not through slapping stomachs. The Holy Ghost, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost impregnated Mary by the word of the Lord. God is God, don't limit him. He spoke, Mary be pregnant with my seed. Mary a virgin had never had sex became pregnant with Jesus. <laughs> it was by the act of the Holy Ghost. This was done so that Jesus, because the blood type come from the Father, this was done so that the blood type of Jesus would not be the blood type of Adam and his sin. Come on, y'all stick with me. Adam sin, and in Adam was sin. And in Adam all died. But for Jesus to be the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Man, I better calm down. For Jesus being the lamb worthy to take away the sin of the world. According to the law, he had to be a spotless sacrifice. No blemish. Sin is a blemish. Jesus was born without sin. Jesus came down to 40 and two generations. And the seed of Adam was attained by sin. So the seed in Mary was what impregnated that ovum, that ovary, that holy seed without sin. Would no longer pass sin down to man, but Jesus would become the sacrifice. Whoa! He didn't want the line of sin sustained. He came to die for sin. Oh, Chronicle, let's go. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Mary's willingness, yieldedness, and obedience is manifested first through her words. Then it was lived out. Mary's words. Then it was lived out. I said, Mary's words, then it was lived out. Here's the Carrington paraphrase for Luke 138. Lord, let it be to me. Let it be concerning me according to what you said. Can you imagine that? Just keep it on this for a minute, Chronicle. A young virgin never had sex. The Lord said, have my seed. She accepted it. She first questioned, them, how am I going to get pregnant? I've never known a man. And the Holy Ghost, through angel Gabriel, made it clear it will come by the power of the Holy Ghost. This will happen because God said, and Mary said again, be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me. <laughs> man, every time I say that, I feel the jolt of the Holy Ghost according to your word. Oh, my God. Y'all see that again? Let it be concerning me according to what you said. Found that I need y'all to hear me. Let's go. We complicate matters. Yes, we often do. When we refuse to simply just accept what God said. When we take what God said and try to complicate it. I'm not going to mention sin to isolate anybody or anybody's lifestyle. But look how much things have been complicated simply because 
We're taking what God said. And because we don't like what God said, trying to make what we say mean more than what God said. Look how complicated things I've got. Look how much people are allowing offense to become more meaningful than God's word. Can I say this? Look at me a moment, Chronicle. Truth will offend you when you're in darkness. Truth will offend you when you're in darkness. Truth will offend you when you're in darkness. And we need not apologize for truth. Chronicle, let's go. Because family, it's time to stop complicating matters. Again, I say truth will always be offensive when you're in darkness. We don't say the truth with condemnation. That's what people get caught up on. The names we call them. The things mean we say. No, truth isn't mean. Truth is in love, but truth is still truth. How do people know Jesus if we who know him won't speak the truth? We need to stop complicating matters and accept what God said. Let's go to our original text, Isaiah 26 and 3, one more time. Thou will keep him. In perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. God said, Isaiah 26 and 3, God is the one talking, and he said he would keep all in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. The word stayed means focus on, consistently seeking after, committed to submitting to. Can I say that again? Come on, product love. Focus on. Yes. Consistently seeking after. Committing to submitting to. When your mind is stayed on God, you're focused on it. Lord have mercy. You're consistently seeking after it. And you're committed to submitting to it. That's why I don't have no time for a bunch of drama. My mind is focused on God. My mind is consistently seeking after God. Yeah, my mind is committed to his word. He promises God mercy. He promises to keep all in flawless, look at that word perfect, and mature or balance peace whose mind is stayed on. Now, here's a question that we close. Y'all good? I see my time is going, but I just want to get it to you. I know y'all got some more shopping to do, but you got to get this word in your spirit. Why does God want us to have perfect peace? And how does he give it to us? Well, why? Because he, that trust in the Lord, he will have peace. How? He that trusts in the Lord, almighty God, we we'll have peace. That's how he gives it to us. Our trust. Receive this understanding. Peace is empowered by trust. Peace is empowered by trust. Look at me a moment. Look at me a moment. Look at me a moment. My wife has never put poison in my food. It would have worked by now. She's had 40 years of feeding me. First year of our marriage, I gained 25 pounds. Lord, help me. I'm just losing the last five from 40 years ago. <laughs> I've lost weight. I, I'm, in, I'm determined to. But that 25 pounds was hard to lose because I was at peace. <laughs> but I trust her. I don't have to sit down to the table when she fixes anything. I wonder, is there bug spray in it, arsenic in it? Is there something bad in it? Was care not taken to fix it? Was there spoiled meat used? Was there sour milk used? My wife knows what I can and cannot eat. She knows what's good. She's proven I can trust her down through the years. Never once have had I had 
in the cage and sit down to the table. Say, what that woman trying to do to me? She trying to collect the insurance. She put raid in my soup. She put something in my coffee or my tea. No, I've learned to trust her. I sit down, we bless the table, and we dig in because there's trust. Trust. <laughs> Peace is empowered by trust. Let's go specifically, Chronicle. God's peace is empowered by our trust in him. I can lay my life in his arms because I trust him. God's peace is empowered by my trust in him. I can go to sleep at night and know that he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber sleep. Sanity in this insane world is empowered by our trust in God because he said, I give you my peace. Jesus said it, Lord have mercy. Look at this text before we close. In John 14, 26 and 27, Jesus said, my God, John 14, 26, but the helper who is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things I've said unto you. Hear the promise of Jesus. Lord, I feel like praising God right now. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. God, whoa, neither let it be afraid. Am I preaching right up in here? Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I'm in an insane world, but I can't let my heart be troubled. Trouble on the right of me, trouble on the left of me, trouble behind me, trouble in front of me. Oh, I managed to put some trouble under my feet, and up above my head, there's sometimes trouble. But I Jesus said, somebody feel this. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. I got a word for you as I prepare to close. We must cease complicating our lives. Come on, everybody, make a commitment. You talking about New Year's resolution? This is this is what it ought to be. I'm going to stop complicating my own life. And if you're bringing complications, you ain't in my life. I, I just don't need that mess in my life. I don't need it. All you carrying a bunch of drama, I'm preparing you now. If I don't call you, ain't because I don't love you. If I don't spend time with you, ain't because I don't want to be bothered. I don't want no drama. So much is going on in 2024. Even now before 2023 is over, my God, still mass shootings, still murders in Baltimore. I know they're trying to keep it under 300. I pray we do. But who put 300 as a mark? My God, one murder is one too many. But I need for us to understand that I'm not going to let my life be full of a bunch of drama. I want the peace of God. My God, my God, stop complicating your life. Make this your New Year's resolution. Because our trust in God, come on, Chronicle, opens up to the simplicity of God. Can I say that again? My trust in God opens up to the simplicity of God. Life is really more simple than we make it. 
even in hard and rough places. I, can I declare when you trust God, it simplifies your life. Uh, when you trust God, it makes things a lot better. Can I get a witness? Uh, my God, we need the peace of God. Can I get a witness in the house? Uh, Jesus gave us his peace. Jesus gives us his peace. His peace is guaranteed uh, if we keep our minds uh, stayed on him. Lord, I feel like preaching now. Beloved, I need y'all to understand. You got to get an extra help with a piece. I know some of us are preparing for Christmas, Christmas dinner, but you got to prepare to take more peace. Somebody understand. I'm trusting God. I got to say it again. Oh, Lord, opens up to the simplicity of God. Everything about God is not complicated. What makes it complicated is we don't have the same disposition of Mary. Lord, be it unto me according to your word. His peace is guaranteed if you keep your mind stayed on him. Can we all agree? Lord, I got a close. Woo. That a simple maiden became great because she simply said yes to God. Oh, let's carry this on home. I feel like preaching now. My God, can we all agree that a young lady, my God, changed the course of this world by her yes. Sure, God could have found somebody else. Oh, Chronicle, I feel like preaching this now. Sure, God could have raised up another young lady. But Mary, who had never been touched, Mary, who had never had sex, Mary, who had never been pregnant, said, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. I doubt, but I will not develop heart doubt. Be it unto me, according to your word. My God, <laughs> her head didn't know how it was going to happen. But our heart said yes. Come on, Chronicle, let's praise God now. Her situation was about to change in ways that she could not conceive. But our heart said yes. Her reputation would be put at risk. But our heart said yes. Her life was about to be permanently altered. But our heart said yes. Can we agree with God? It's like we should. With God and agree with God and say what God says. Like this is what Mary said. And we need to start reinventing the wheel. You want to have peace. Keep your mind on the Lord. Say yes. You want to have perfect peace. Keep your heart towards God. And say yes. You want to have the peace that passes all understanding. Come on, look at me. I'm looking you in the face. Say yes. Mary said yes. Didn't know what was going to happen, but she trusted God. I what was going to happen the next second, but I trust God. I don't know where everything coming from, but I trust God. I'm asking you, do you want the peace? Then trust God. Who's going to give God a simple yes in order to grab hold to a same life? I got to close. But the same life, S-A-N-E, in the midst of every insanity, is a guarantee from God. Again, he said, my peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you. Not as the world gives. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Oh, let me calm down. I, I got to close. Man, I start sweating myself and I, 
I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, I feel the Holy Ghost. There's a time that you just got to simply tell the Lord, I trust you. This world is too shaky not to trust God. There's too much insecurity around not to trust God. There's too much instability. And I know the average person don't mean you no know harm. But people don't have answers. And if they don't have answers, how are they going to give you answers? Beloved, I remember the song, and it's not a Christian song. But it says, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Somebody else picked it up and say, I am going to stay on the battlefield. Oh, yeah. I am going to stay on the battlefield. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Man, I feel like keying up, but I got to close. I'm going to treat my neighbor right. I'm going to trust in the Lord till I die. Beloved, let me tell you something. Today is the day to make up your mind. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Ah, can I talk for a few more seconds about those who trusted in God? Noah was told to build a boat on dry land. Noah didn't build a boat near water. Noah built the boat on the command of God who said it's going to rain. Y'all know if you know the Bible up to that time, there was nothing such like rain. The earth was watered by the dew that came up from the earth, from the water table that came up and went up and caused clouds to be able to just pass over. But up until then, there was no rain. But Noah trusted God. God told Abraham, leave from your father's house. Go to a land that I will show you. Abraham said, Lord, I need to put this on the GPS. I need to plug in the coordinates. But God said, trust me. Oh, Lord, beloved, I can keep going. David went up to a giant named Goliath. I'm wondering if we got any more Davids in our day who as a little lad, about 17 years old, God was up against a giant who was older than him and been a warrior since he was 17. How David talked smack back to the giant that talked smack to him because David trusted in the Lord. Can I talk about my God, now Gideon, who God told to take 300 Oh, Lord, and go fight against several armies. And how 300, my God, defeated a whole segment of several armies bound together. Beloved, I wish that I could say this clear, but I got to close because we got to go. But can I close on one of my favorite hymns? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. I feel like preaching. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that you are with me, will be with me. Till the end, can somebody unmute your mic and help me say, Jesus, Jesus, I trust you. I move you over and over. Oh, Lord, be in the wheel. Be it unto me. Whoa. According to your word. Woo. <laughs> Oh, my God, beloved, hear me. I'm done. 
But this year coming, you're going to have to trust God. Your sanity is going to depend on it. Your life is going to depend on it. You are going to depend on it. Trust. Don't reinvent the wheel. Sanity in an insane world is empowered by trust. Eyes are closed. Heads are lifted. Y'all receive it today. I know you do. This message bless me. Oh, God, I thank you for what you put in my heart, what you brought through my mouth, and what you're about to bring in the lives of your people. We will be sane in this insane world. We will apply the God said factor. We will stick to the regimen. We will master our minds, our mouth. We will, Lord God, saturate in the word and grow on purpose. Lord, we will not be weary and well-doing. We will reap and faint not. Now, Lord, you, according to Philippians 1 and 6, have done a good work in us, a work that you will finish until the day of Jesus Christ. The Father, we turn our eyes on you. So if your glory is not there, we're not there. We look full in your wonderful face so that the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the perfect light of your glory and grace. We will not reinvent the wheel. Greater than ourselves and even lesser than ourselves have put trust in you and you didn't fail them. And you won't fail us. Lord, your glory be revealed. Your purpose be manifested. And your name be glorified. In the strong name of Jesus, give us the bread. Give us the life. And Lord, we're saying we have a perfect mind, a stable mind, a steady heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's the altar call. First of all, I need you to admit two things. That I live in an insane, unstable world. And I need to be stabilized. I also need to admit that I was born in sin shaped in and by an environment full of iniquity. So these three things we admonish you with today in this altar call. Admit your condition. Admit you need Jesus. Time out for lying. Time out for saying I don't need religion. Actually, you don't. You need relationship with Jesus. You need him no matter who you are, where you are, What's your background? What's your status? Jesus is not just for poor and underprivileged. He died for everybody. He died for the rich. He died for the CEO. He died for the one that is the board of director president. He died for the pauper. He died for the homeless. He died to give us brand new life. Today, the day you hear the voice of the Lord, you must admit you need him. It will do you no good if you continue to deny your need for him. Secondly, you must believe what he said. If a virgin who has never had sex, well, and I have to keep saying it, that's, that's the way it is. If a virgin who has never known a man can tell God, let it be to me, like you said. She believed and trusted. Why don't you trust Jesus today for your salvation? There's no other name given by where men can be saved but the name Jesus. Then you must commit. Get yourself in a good church. 
one that teaches the word, one that preaches the word, one whose leadership lives the word. Don't look for perfection because you won't find it in man without Christ. Christ perfects the submitted. Christ perfects the committed. Come to him as you are. I came to Jesus as I was weary, worn, and sad. But I found in him, talking about me, a resting place. He's made me glad. These three things, admit you need him, believe he is the one that you need, and commit to follow him. Do that, he'll change your life drastically. I'm happier now following Jesus. I'm more fulfilled following Jesus. And I ain't going back. Lord, be it unto me, according to what you said. Today, come to Jesus, just tell him simply, I need you. That's it. I need you to save me. I need you to show me that love that preacher talking about. And the day you hear the voice of the Lord, don't harden your heart. That's it. Come, admit, believe, commit. Life Builder Church is here for you. Let me give you our numbers. You may want to talk to us. We do take calls. The numbers are about to come up on your screen. 443. 776-0255. Somebody's standing by now to talk with you. They'll pray with you. And if the line is busy, please call back or we'll leave a message. We'll call you back. But we want you to know we're here. Also, email is available. If you don't want to talk, you want to write. Cool. LBC Ministry at Yahoo.com. Call us. We'll be responsive. LBC Ministry at yahoo.com. Also, our website. You can write us through that too. Our website is lbcbaltimore.org. lbcbaltimore.org. Now, it's about to be changed. Not the website domain, but you're going to see a new website very soon. But right now, you can reach us through the same one. LBCBaltimore.org. Beloved, we're here for you. We're here for you. We're here for you. In the chat, I got people watching. I can't see and I got my sound turned down so I won't get echoes. But if somebody give their life to the Lord, put it in the chat that you did. We want to welcome you to the family of God. If you're not ashamed, you're not embarrassed, you don't need to be. You're in good company. Life Builder Church is a safe place for those who want the safety of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you aren't the preacher today. You aren't the singers today. But we have a way that you can participate. Now, before they put up the information, Life Builders Church is a generous church. We come on these airways, but it costs. We have in-person worship, but it costs. It costs because that's what it does. We need you as you hear God to contribute. I build this church is a church full of generous givers. You can read our declaration and see our generosity is vast. Not bragging. One day we're going to show you we fed 7,000 during the pandemic. God has blessed us thus far this year to feed almost 700 people through various food drops we've done. Last week we fed 150. <laughs> During Thanksgiving, we gave out almost 200 turkeys plus. Then we had a food drop in April down in the Matthew Henson community. 
gave out over 200 boxes of food, clothes and shoes, information about getting your life together from drug addiction. You know, we're here to serve. When you give to Light Builders Church, you're giving to a not-for-profit, P-R-O-F-I-T organization. But we will use your money to sow into lives. That's the best investment. Kingdom of God, serving lives. Why don't you consider empowering Light Builders Church today with your best gift? Here are the ways we can give. We have Cash App. That's dollar sign, Life Builders Church. Chronically, we'll put it up on the screen in a moment. We have PayPal. Yes, we do. You can go on that website I told you about. That's lbcbaltimore.org and give in to that. It has a give mechanism. PayPal, Life Builders Church, slash, okay, or oh, Life Builders Church, paypal.me <laughs> slash like builders church. I mean, all these ways you can give and be a blessing. Add to what we're doing. Everybody you'll soon see that has ever invested in our church receives a return on that investment. You want to know what's in it for you? You'll please God because we're working to please God. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Also, beloved, we want you to know that we have a mailing address. If you want to send your seed, that's Light Builders Church, Care Advantage Incorporated. Send it through the mail. Now, beginning the first of the year, we'll give you a P.O. box to send it to. But for right now, to the 31st, this address works. Chronicle is going to set it up. Light Builders Church, Care Advantage Incorporated, 300 West Road, Suite 300, I believe, <laughs> or Suite 100, whatever. Y'all know what it is. This is up there. Y'all know I can't see, but I'm good. <laughs> if y'all can read and you see the address, use it. Towson, Maryland, 21204. It's on the screen. Life Builders Church. Seed that seed into the good ground of life builders. And God be glorified. Mm. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. I love him so much. Oh, this coming week, we will not be in impact worship. Take the time off, enjoy your families. There will be midday man on Wednesday, but the rest of the week you got for your family. Enjoy Christmas Day. Enjoy a powerful day with your family on tomorrow. Don't allow drama to cloud the blessing of the day. I believe our prayer warriors will still be praying every morning, 6.15 to 6.30. You can join us at 1-605-475-4700. They'll put that on the screen because you may want to join us in prayer. You may want to come pick up your phone and join us prayer, in prayer every morning, 6.15 and 6.30. We'll also be praying corporately on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. this week. All the other activities we won't be having, but we will be praying every day. We will be interceding for you. 6.15, 6.30, and at 6 o'clock live on Wednesday evening, Eastern time, same time. God bless you. You need prayer, use our email to send your requests. We agree with you. We stand with you. And on behalf of my wonderful wife who sang earlier, all of our singers, my God, that participated today in every chronic, I want you and your family. Have a very Merry Christmas. Join us next Sunday live, 7701, 7 Mile Lane, Pikesville, Maryland, 
212-208-2108. 10 a.m. sharp. There's only one time, one time. Join us for worship live. Our young adults will be in charge. We'll bring in a bottle of oil. We're going to all mix our oil. We're going to be fragrant it with spitting art and give it back to you. Use it to anoint your doors and windows. Cover your house. Anoint your family on New Year's Day. Then New Year's Day will be virtual with our first worship at 10 a.m. Eastern. Same place where we are right now. Well, we love you. On behalf of my wife, Pastor Althea, our sons, Jonathan, his wonderful wife, Charnay, our son, Evan, our grand sugars, our entire family. Merry Christmas. Merry, blessed, powerful, Christ filled Christmas. God bless you. God bless you. Merry Christmas, Bishop. Hallelujah. Hold up your hands, everybody. And know that God dwells in the midst of Light Builders Church. God dwells in the midst of a blessed community. God's greatest grace and peace be unto you. And his peace be multiplied. God bless.